Alright guys, it is a cold winter night here in front of the fire. You're back in New York, baby. Back in New York, where I think there are two hours left in the month of April. This is the month of April going out like a lion in uh, the great state of New York. I'm thinking that Bugs in a Jar farm is washing away down a rain-swollen river. I am uh, hiding out for my life. I'm at, a, I am at Sister Sandy's house uh, where it will be snowing tomorrow night. We're going to welcome in May in New York with our first snow of the month of May tomorrow here. And I am so happy I am back in New York, baby, where I guess in Phoenix, Arizona, 100 degrees, 100 degrees in Arizona, flooding and snowing in New York, but I guess they're looking, what, at two feet, two feet of snow tomorrow in some parts of Michigan. So, uh, anyway, it is an exciting ride uh, here on the planet. I do want to uh, send out a big thank you to alert listener uh, Kirk for uh, this fine new t-shirt, Choking on... <coughs> choking on... <coughs> on hope t-shirt uh, we might be able to uh, arrange for you to get your own t-shirt just send me an email and we might be able to figure out how to get you one of those so uh I have been busy as a beaver, busy as a beaver since I got back to New York, baby. So I uh, have not had time to uh, do any ranting or uh, going on the news or anything. So I've been toying around with uh, this story about India becoming the most populous country on the planet and I have been waiting for one mention one mention anywhere uh, on the mainstream media uh, as this story has been played for the past month where there is one mention of what this means for the planet and of course, what it means for the planet is now <clears throat> that India, with no help from the rest of the planet, like China, with no help from the rest of the planet, can destroy all life on planet Earth. That India and China are now running neck and neck as the two most dangerous countries on the planet, and certainly when you combine the two, what does that combine? 2.8 billion people on this planet. So between the two countries, we can kiss goodbye the planet. If, if all the rest of us die tomorrow, India and China will have no problem taking down the planet. So... I was a little bit encouraged by this story from the BBC. Most populous nation should India rejoice or panic? India has surpassed China as the world's most populous country. What does this mean for the world? The only problem is that there was no mention anywhere in the story, on any level, what this means for the world. It was never mentioned in the story what this means for the world. 
that it that it seals the doom uh, for the planet. It's the you, you know if we needed one final straw on the camel's back, it's no, nowhere mentioned in the story, and generally the uh, the verdict from the BBC is that India has every reason to rejoice for surpassing China. You will not see the words overpopulation. You will not see the words climate change, food insecurity, social decay. Uh, nowhere mentioned in this story from the BBC. So then I got a little bit I almost choked on my own hopium. Well, maybe this story from The Independent titled, Should India Really Be Celebrating As Its Population Overtakes China's? So I thought it was implied in the headline uh, that maybe India should not be celebrating this, but I go on that story from beginning to end and find, according to The Independent, just like according to the BBC, just like according to every single uh, article I have ever read in the mainstream media about this story, that in fact, yes, India really should be celebrating the fact that it is, uh, it, you know, it's overtaken China. And not only does this story not talk about overpopulation, not talk about what it means, and not only in terms of population, but as, but as more and more people make more and more money as the economy, uh, that the overconsumption and overpopulation of India could spell doom for India and the rest of the planet. They, you know, they were brushing aside, uh, you know, basically talking about the myth of overpopulation. So, anyway, since I have nothing, no doom scrolling here, uh, it, it is all of these economists, demographers, whatnot, cheering on the fact that India uh, is now quickly overtaking China as the single biggest threat to life on planet Earth. I just decided to go for an easy one where they have no problem uh, talking about uh, talking about the collapse of everything. And that would, of course, be if you don't want to talk about the collapse of India. Let's go over here to The Guardian. We're going to go over to the third newspaper from the other side of the pond for this snapshot of Haiti that anybody who does not know uh, the definition of the collapse of everything. Uh, this is The Guardian bringing us an update on life in Haiti in the spring of 2023 titled It's Hell, It's Hell, Vigilantes Take to Haiti's streets in bloody reprisals against gangs. And uh, I am saying three cheers for the vigilantes. And I can't, I, I think a couple of journalists were killed over there in Haiti. I'm assuming it was not Tom Phillips and Harold Isaac that were killed in Haiti. So these uh, brave journalists went over there to Port-au-Prince, Haiti to bring us this report. I will uh, 
put the link on here. Anybody uh, who is who's into Doomer porn and hasn't seen this article, this is just some great late Sunday night Doomer porn uh, to uh, take your mind off of India. I will put the link on here, but uh, if you want to hear some old Doomer, read some Doomer porn late on a Sunday night. I'll be happy to do that for you. My uh, pronunciation of French names is not that good. I'm just warning you, I am a redneck. Take it away, Guardian. <clears throat> As Valina LCA Charlier ventured onto the streets of her conflict-stricken city last week, she encountered scenes that will haunt her for many years to come. Armed civilians dragging bodies through the streets. Armed civilians dragging bodies through the streets, smoldering corpses, young men with machetes chasing suspected gangsters they planned to kill. <laughs> quoting, uh, quoting, uh, Ms. Charlier, or Charlier, who calls herself a human rights activist. Yes, quote, I have seen enough dead people for many lifetimes since Monday. If you get killed, you get burned. It's kill, burn, kill, burn. It's nothing I would want anyone else to witness. It stays with you. It's hell, you know? <clears throat> there you go. The nightmarish events unfolding in Haiti's coastal capital, Port-au-Prince, began after dawn on Monday. So, we're talking a week ago when members of one of its most notorious gangs reportedly tried to seize control of the city's Turgo area. I guess that's some uh, neighborhood that they had not quite taken over yet. Said Charlier, who works in the neighborhood, quote, what they did not count on was the population striking back. Hmm. Over the coming hours, civilians brandishing knives, rocks, and handguns, brandishing knives, rocks, and handguns, rose up against the heavily armed criminals who control more than 80% of Haiti's capital and whose activities have led the United Nations to compare the situation there to a war. Over the coming, at, oh, I'm sorry, I just read that. So as the sun rose, I guess meaning on Tuesday, as the sun rose, the bloodshed spread in the Canapé Vert neighborhood, 13 suspected gangsters were beaten, stoned to death, and burned after their minibus was stopped by police. In, an, in Turgo, another six men were reportedly set on fire. The violence continued on Tuesday as Canapé Vert's residents formed self-defense brigades and took to their barricaded streets with rocks and knives. Uh, one vigilante, a 37-year-old named Jeff S. Ezekiel, told the Associated Press, quote, We are planning to fight and keep our neighborhood clean of these savages. Yes. On Wednesday, as groups sprung up in other communities, another lynching was reported. This time, eight suspected criminals in the community of the Bussy. Uh, 
Charlier remembered one person in Turgot telling her, quote, We're already dead, so we might as well die fighting. And there you go. We are already dead, so we might as well die fighting. You tell them. <clears throat> the lynching... The, the lynchings have sparked a strange and disturbing mix of horror, fear, and optimism in Haitian communities fed up with being terrorized by the gangs. I guess this is mostly an interview with this uh, woman, Charlier. Quote, Seeing the population fighting back, even though there are lots of human rights violations, even though justice by the people is never the way to go, hmm, because it just spirals into a cycle of violence that never stops, gives you the sense that people are as mad as you are. What's happening, what's happening, you know, this vigilante uh, response to taking these dirt bags off the street any way they can, that what's happening is giving her, huh, is giving her, huh, huh, is giving <coughs> hope to the population that they can fight back. So I finally found some hopium that uh, I agree with 100% that this is what anybody who does not understand uh, what this planet is going to look like in a few decades, you don't even need to go to Sudan anymore. You just need to go, where the hell is Haiti? About a hundred miles from, uh, from Miami? Anybody who does not understand uh, where this planet is going, uh, where it is going is lots of human rights violations. Uh, do you think so? And uh, that's the, that is the least of it. Okay, this is... Author and activist Monique Kleska said of the lynchings, quote, It is obscene, you know, lynching uh, a, a, a bunch of scumbags that deserve to be lynched. That is obscene, but that is what these bandits have pushed us to. Exactly. I am 100% in favor uh, of these vigilantes. Y you can only take so much crap. A and this is exactly what it's going to look like. Uh, more and more of these punk-ass gangs are, are, are going to start taking over more and more uh, of this planet. And in any sense of law and order and human rights violations and, and all of that little social justice warrior crap is going to fly right out of the window. Uh, I mean, what we're seeing just in uh, uh, American party politics, it's, all, it's, it's, all, it's only words right now. But uh, just, just take what you see on Twitter every day, and it's not much of a jump between Twitter uh, in, in Peoria, Illinois, and, and, and what is going on. Uh, we, are, we are heading in, in, into just a, just a, a massive shit show. Uh, on this planet as everything goes to hell in a handbasket. And you better believe this story is going to be playing out in India uh, when, when the food starts running out. Come back in 20 years to India. 
and you will be seeing uh, this story coming out of there. It, it, it is clear as Cairo syrup, as my granddaddy would say. Okay. <clears throat> Continuing with this woman, Monique Kleska, it's more than frustration. Rage is the only word. Kleska added, blaming the surge of mob justice on years of elite political corruption and connivance with organized crime. And, and obviously, you're going to see, be seeing more and more of this it is uh, where the government is actually going to be colluding with the criminals. The, the line between uh, your government and organized crime is, is, is getting blurred more and more and more every day. Haiti is just the flashpoint. It's the tip of the iceberg. Uh, you're going to see more and more collusion uh, between government officials and organized crime, which are two uh, peas in the same pod. Uh, you know, sharing power while, uh, we, you know, everybody is just supposed to sit there and take it. Uh, and, and, and this whole wheel is turning uh, along with all of the environmental destruction. Anybody who doesn't think this is tied to the environmental destruction of Haiti, obviously we have had a failure to communicate. All of these balls of wax, are, are, are they're, 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 they feed each other. All of this stuff, you know, trying to separate societal collapse from economic collapse, from ecological collapse, you have all three of these. They feed each other. Uh, Haiti is uh, the, the absolute poster child. What do you expect? Uh, the environment has gone completely down the toilet in that shithole country. The economy has gone completely down the toilet in that shithole country. And I'm not going to get into whose fault that is. Uh, the, the fact is that the environment and the economy have gone to hell in a handbasket, so obviously this is what happens when the environment and the economy go to hell in a handbasket. Uh, continue quoting this woman. Here's what happens. It's harrowing. It's brutal. It is inhuman, but when you consider all these years that we have been put under that pressure by the gangs, the economic people, and the political people, it's not surprising. There you go. Daniel Foote, the former U.S. Special Envoy to the Caribbean country, said, he was also unsurprised at the violence given the police's failure to bring the gangs to heel. People are sick and tired of thinking their local cops are going to do a damn thing about this. This uh, quoting Foot, the uh, former U.S. Special Envoy to Haiti, quote, at some point I thought they were going to start to take matters into their own hands because they have got no choice. They have got nothing else. The Haitians, like anybody, can only take so much. The gangs have stolen their lives from them. And there you go. Um, Foot, I guess, is a spokesperson for Haiti's embattled and feebled national police force. 
implored citizens to stop. Do not take justice into your hands. Oh, this is, uh, I guess, I, I don't know. They, they, this is very poorly written. Who, uh, anyway, the, the article kind of falls apart in here with a little bit of bad uh, journalism. Uh, but, but any plea for people, you know, the vigilantes to put their weapons down, that plea looks likely to fall on deaf ears given the scale of the security catastrophe facing the Caribbean's second largest city, which was leveled by an earthquake in 2010 and has been struggling to find its feet ever since. As people in Port-au-Prince fought to reclaim their communities, the UN Secretary General's special envoy to Haiti offered a chilling overview of the country's, quote, rapidly deteriorating security situation and the parallel humanitarian crisis that have left almost half of Haiti's 11 million citizens going hungry. Um, Maria Isabel Salvador told the UN Security Council that March had seen Haiti's highest number of reports of murders, rapes, kidnappings, and lynching since 2005. Children had been shot in classrooms and snatched at school gates. Snipers had indiscriminately targeted civilians. Women had been terrorized by multiple perpetrator rape. Uh, oh, she is the Ecuadorian diplomat. I, I guess she's down there watching this. Uh, quote, faced with these increasingly violent armed gangs vying con for control of neighborhoods of the capital with limited or no police presence, some residents have begun to take matters into their own hands. These dynamics lead indefectibly to the breakdown of social fabric with unpredictable consequences for the entire region. The human rights activist Rosie August Dusena called the lynchings a worrisome development. Her group had been unable to calculate the exact death toll, but some suspect dozens, perhaps scores of people have been killed in recent days. Um, Dusena blamed the government of the Prime Minister Ariel Henry, who took power after the 2021 assassination of then President Jovenel Moise for the uprising as it had failed to dismantle and prosecute gang members and surrendered many areas to their rule. Quote, there is a certain complicity between the gangs and the state authorities, Dusena said, adding that permanent calm would only come if authorities stopped protecting uh, criminal groups. Uh, Kleska said it was hard to know where the nascent anti-gang insurrection would lead. Quote, they, meaning as of, as of now, they are small incidents, but they are significant. Will they multiply? What will happen? <clears throat> I think we have to watch and we have to be very sensitive to that, she said, predicting the coming weeks would see, quote, more people, cities, and towns rising up and saying, we are not taking this. Enough is 
enough. Uh, and then it goes on from there. Uh, you know, the... And then they're talking about... Uh, You know, they're, they're talking about an international uh, intervention. Uh, the big uh, foot, for his part, said he was 100% ideologically opposed to another foreign intervention given the miserable track record of previous efforts, including the UN stabilization mission whose peacekeepers brought cholera to Haiti and were accused of sexual abuse and exploitation. Uh, quote, but I believe that they are going to need an intervention. It's just that bad, to be honest with you. It's not Haiti anymore. It's a prison. People stay in their houses and only leave if they ab absolutely have to. It is dangerous as fuck. I love it. The former special envoy to Haiti pulling out the F-bomb. Yep. Uh... Charlier rejected calls for a foreign intervention. Quote, I recognize the police cannot deal with this alone, the activist said, but nor does she want thousands of heavily armed foreign... She want thousands of heavily armed foreign troops to return to Haiti, quote, to put a band-aid on a cancer. Uh, after navigating six vigilante roadblocks to reach work on Thursday morning, Charlier voiced despair at how the bloodshed would affect Haitian children. Quote, kids are going to school witnessing dead burning bodies on the side of the road. I cannot even think about the collective trauma we are going to have to deal with in a couple of years, she said, comparing parts of her city to a war zone. Honestly, I don't know how I feel. I just hope this is going to end very soon because I'm mentally drained and I am exhausted. Charlier said before concluding with a grim prophecy, quote, What we are seeing in Haiti will end in blood and in ashes, she warned, and people being killed and houses being burned. There you go, uh... Uh, if you like that story, maybe you would also like They Have No Fear and No Mercy as Gang Rule Engulfs Haitian Capital. Uh, Jesus, and uh, this gun is loaded. This is no joke. This gun is loaded. Uh... So if you want to get a just uh, just one photo from what Haiti is looking like, uh, there you go. And be glad you do not live in Haiti, but uh, as goes Haiti, so goes the rest of this planet. So... Uh, when you think you've hit bottom, there is always knocking from below. I'm going to go bring in some firewood and uh, get ready for the first day of May and the snow 
moving in and we'll find out if my house washed away today at Bugs in a Jar Farm. Bye guys. Ah, don't be messing with that gun, little dog. Good little vigilante dog.